Uh, ball, ball movement, more assists. Uh, you, you got it tonight. Just how pleased were you with kind of the offense's bounce back and what kind of keyed uh, the offense tonight? Yeah, I thought the ball movement, especially in the first half, was excellent. Um, I think we had 127 passes in the first half. Um, I think 10 assists maybe on 13 baskets in that first half as well. Um, you know, I, you, you, when you play games against good competition, you hope you can go back and and review video and uh, and find out where your weaknesses are. And certainly lack of ball movement was a, was a big weakness on uh on our part in the last two games in in Nassau but I will say that the uh the way the schedule laid out in in uh in the Bahamas was was difficult um games two and three the lack of we didn't even have 24 hours I've never experienced I've never seen a team uh so tired no excuses because you know that going into a tournament that plays three games in three days um but Memphis is really good and North Carolina is really good and uh, in a short sample size, I know it was an exhibition game, but you play Purdue in an exhibition game. You go to the Bahamas, you play those three games. Uh, you play this game tonight. We've really been challenged, um, and I think we're going to get better. Uh, incredible home crowd tonight. I mean, just just an insane environment. Um, you know, really cool to to experience that, even as a kind of an old guy, you know. vantage point really kind of stepped up on defense tonight uh what did you make of them kind of grinding in on that end of the yeah, floor I thought defensively they were better we still need more from both of them defensively i think they both can improve um you know we don't want battle following a three-point shooter late um i think l can keep the ball in front of him a little bit better thought blockers defense was awesome um you know it's tough position to you know, you're trying to break a press. The team's down, and they're, uh, you know, coming at you with an extra defender. And and uh, you know, I'm sure Layden's going to, you know, he's going to be able to. That's a big time learning experience for a freshman to be in a game, you know, down the stretch against Duke in front of the largest crowd in the history of Bud Walton, and do it, you know, early in his freshman year. So a lot of really positive things. I thought that you know. Uh, the execution of the game plan tonight was a 10 out of 10, um, you know, especially when 25 Mitchell was in the game and, and we had an extra defender at the rim or a goalie. Um, and I thought it, it you know, it, it, it might have altered their um, rotation from what we've seen in the past. A lot in the preseason and leading up. Even through the exhibition season, about all the depth and quality of depth, and with the Tremont Mark, your leading scorer out, maybe your most efficient and effective guy throughout the year so far. Guys stepped up. L. Ellis got off the slump. D Davenport had a multiple three point night in the first half, and then Chandler Lawson looked like he did against Purdue. Tell me what your thoughts are about your depth and the quality of it. Well, tonight, you know, when you look at the bench, um, the bench points 36 to 9. Um, I think Kevin, that's that was a big part of of uh, of tonight's win, because uh, when you're down, your leading score and your bench uh, goes out and 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 outscores an opponent like that. That's that talented, um, with a full roster. I think it 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 you know that signif you know it's a, it's it's pretty clear that we do have uh, some depth. And I thought that uh, Davenport's two threes were were crucial. Um, I thought blockers dribble drives. Um, and, and then I thought Mitchell did a great job with six points in nine minutes on his rolls and finishes around the rim. On that, uh, you talking about battle, I think it's his fourth 21 point game and then the five rebounds and five assists coming off the bench. Yeah. I thought his assists were probably the most impressive thing. Um, he drew extra defenders. Um, we ran a couple isolation plays for him. He did a good job of reading the defense and reading the extra help. Um, and his rebounds, you know, really important. Um, you know, we need, you know, like Davenport, he, we need, we need JD to rebound a little bit 
for us for for us to be able to extend his minutes because he can sure, certainly stretch the defense out with his three point shooting. So, you know, with each of our guys, there's areas that each guy still got to get a lot better at for us to reach our potential. Didn't have any points in the Bahamas. I don't think he had any assists. Um, what happened to him in the Bahamas, and then what happened tonight, where he looked, you know, more like he more like his his usual self, I guess. Well, he didn't get a lot of op. You know, he was over ten over there, and um, you know, I didn't think that we were doing the things that you know that I wanted to do from a ball movement standpoint. And so, um, you know, you hope that uh, you know players can can learn and sit back and and evaluate. So I thought he was great. I mean, I don't know if he turned the ball over at all the whole game. I mean, and and uh, you know, he, I think tonight he started the game off zero for four. Um, Cause I remember whispering to my son, you know, he's, he's over for 14, his last 14 attempts, you know, and I got to make a decision, but I, I, I do think it's, it's, uh, I do think it's clear that, that when L plays good, we're a much better team. So uh, whether I have to, uh, you know, stick with him, if he's, if he's struggling in a game, that might be the case and, and, and try to let him play through it a little bit more maybe than I did in the Bahamas. Uh, um, you know, mark out, you needed L other guys, but how big was it that L responded with you guys down your leading score? Well, that was part of, yeah. I mean, a big part of the reason that we changed the starting lineup like we did is, um, is because of T Mark being out. So Layden did a great job. Um, you know, in, in, in Nassau, but we, there's no way we're going to win tonight's game without L picking up some of T Mark's points. There's no way that we were going to win tonight without Davenport making one or two threes. Uh, so that's why we started those, those two players. And obviously we, we made a change at center too. So a lot of, uh, a lot of changing of the starting lineup from, from what we saw our last uh, game against North Carolina. Coach, it seems like Chandler Lawson's two best games maybe have been against Purdue and now Duke uh, facing a couple of All-Americans. Just what have you made of his performances in those games and what enabled him to elevate his game in these matchups? Well, I think it's, you know, against a, a seven-foot or a 6'11-plus player, uh, he does a great job of walling up. I think he's a really deceptive shot blocker. Um, he's done a good job for us going vertical. And, um, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you play some of these other teams and they're, you know, smaller. And um, the great thing is, I mean, we're going to we're going to run into a lot of real, you know, big guys in, in our league that can that can score with their basket back to the basket and can score around the rim. So we're going to need I mean, the shots blocked to, to you know, to play um, to play Duke and have 10 blocks is impressive. Remembering, but Brazil before his injury last year, I don't feel like he was rebounding the ball quite like what he's done this year. Is that an accurate assessment? Like, is he a better rebounder for you this year? I think so. I mean, and um, look, I, I mean, <laughs> I told him the other day, like, I, I, I think he's capable of having like twenty every night. You know, I mean, he had eleven a night. That's really good, but you know, I think he should have more because of his leaping ability, his hands, his timing. Um. So, yeah, I mean, his stat line's awesome, but I think he's got potential in in his body to to get more. Bounce back from TV after going scoreless Friday. And then with Caleb and the, the five assists, do y'all see that vision from him? He finds like maybe the weak side corner off the dribble. Do y'all see that in behind closed doors a lot? Not really, because we never go live. <laughs> um. No, I, I mean, I just thought that, you know, when he gets cooking team, you know, that occupies extra defenders. And and I thought some of our guys had really good spacing. Like they we were running to the ball all the time in in uh, in the Bahamas. Like, I mean, it was like some guy dribbles and then two guys are running towards him. It's like, no, you got to do the opposite. Freaking run away from the ball to get open. Um, we weren't getting open on dribble handoffs, you know, we weren't setting our man up and, and I thought we did a way better job tonight of little things like that. But you've touched on it a little bit already, but towards the end of the game, you had a lot of trust in late in ball 
Walker, what did you learn about the freshman tonight? Well, I mean, I think that he earned that based on the way that he played in 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 the Bahamas. Um, but we also learned that when he goes to the offensive glass, it it you know R.J. Davis just annihilated us on their sideline break when when Layden was doing that, and and that's what you want you, you want your players and your teams to, to learn um, from wins and losses. Like there's a lot we're going to be able to learn from tonight as well. Um, but. The thing with Layden is toughness, competitiveness, and no fear. I mean, those three categories, he's an A+. Plus. And then he's got areas that he's got to continue to get better on, which he will through experience and through work. See T. Mark up moving around, even though he wasn't able to play, I guess. How is he doing? Is there any idea what the next several days might look like for him? Yeah, I mean, it, it, the injury is uh, the back is feeling better. Now we have some hip and groin stuff just from the aftershock of, you know, the, the, what the body absorbed, um, really impressive. Cause you know, we took off for two days, which we never do, um, you know, Saturday and Sunday and we show up Monday and he's in full uniform. I mean, there was no chance he was going to be able to do anything, but gingerly walk around but he put his uniform on i've never seen it ever um he did it again today he did it yes like he's you know and i think that like helped our chemistry believe it or not like that's a player being all in to i mean he could have easily been in street clothes he could have easily gotten and laid off on the side and you know gotten treatment um didn't get treatment at all monday tuesday or today and shoot around yeah, he was in full uniform standing, going from station to station. He asked questions about the game plan. Um, but when he's available, have no idea because we're not going to play him if that groin has a, you know, that's an injury that can linger. And there's no way we're putting him out there until he's got full clearance. Coach KB really led the way in the second half with 15 points. Can you talk about just what he was able to do to really take over and can get momentum going into the late minutes of the game? Well, I think anytime you have an explosive score, um, you know, he's a really confident player and, and he saw a couple go through. And, you know, if you look at, um, you know, the nation's best free throw attempt players and free throw make players, he's he's in the top 10 or top 12 in the country. Um, and then he's got great range on his three ball. Um, and we wanted the you know, we wanted the ball in his hands, obviously, with, with you look at, um, you know, KB's. Uh, point total as well as his assists. I mean, pretty impressive numbers. Eric, that, that was your hundredth victory. I don't know if you even realize it with all the craziness, but hundredth where here? Okay, hundredth <laughs> uh, at Arkansas. I mean, to have you know, you I did hundred the G League. I got a hundred here. I got. A, I mean, I've okay. been a lot of places. Okay, I don't know what a hundred. Yeah, I, I'll try to add up all your wins. Maybe my, I can help you with that. But just well, do it in such a memorable way. What, what did that mean to you? You know what? Hunter never gave me a ball now that I'm thinking about it. I think at Nevada, Doug Newth gave me a ball with the hundred wins. I don't I gotta uh I gotta check with Hunter on that. I guess he's been occupied of late. <laughs> to do it in that kind you you know, you didn't beat uh I don't know, nowhere state, you beat Duke, you know. I honestly I had no idea until someone told me. I don't know if K would told someone told me. I had no idea, honestly, going into the game. Speaking of wins, he only had four last year, you know, and that the, tonight was his fifty, and he's from Durham. What do you think this game meant to him? Probably a lot. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, anytime you play it, you know, a, a team or a program that's even in proximity of, you know, where you're from, I think it's it means something. And obviously, playing at Louisville, same conference, it probably probably meant a lot to him. But I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you bob and tell you that i talked to him about it because i really don't care um just wanted to figure out a way to win so i never asked him about durham or uh kind of the tough schedule that y'all have played so far it probably feels weird to y'all but y'all have a week off or close to a week off before y'all's next game just what we all blame do. that on ruda i mean why we're not playing on the weekend i really don't know 
Uh, but yeah, what what just what does the next couple of days look like for the team? A lot of, I mean, I know a lot of film. Um, a lot of areas to get better. I mean, we'll probably send our guys stuff tomorrow, and and uh, you know we had some guys play some heavy minutes in a physical game, um, so probably get back at it. Um, uh, Friday, I guess. Coach, uh, I remember talking to you after the Auburn game a few years ago and just talking about how the thrill and the joy of a, a great victory, especially at home, never goes away. I know there's stuff to clean up after today, but, I mean, do you still get the same rush that you do that you did, like you said, in the G League and here and there, early Arkansas after a night like tonight? Well, there's no environments like that in the G League. I can promise you that. Anybody that's been to a G League game, there's about 100 people there. Um, but, yeah, I mean – Really, Aaron, like tonight, you know, like the the locker room, you know, one of the coolest things ever is to see uh, student athletes celebrate. I mean, they put so much work into it, you know, and I mean, look, we, you know, we, we don't have the record that that, um, that we were hopeful to have. Um, you lose tonight's game, you know, now all of a sudden you're 500 and then you're wondering you got to get some signature wins. And so like there was a lot of pressure on tonight's game a lot. Um, and I thought our guys responded like, I mean, we let them know where we were. I mean, we didn't, we didn't act like, Hey, it's early in the season. We got time. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, it was discussed that it was a must win for us. Um, and then for them to have internal pressure, external pressure, crowd pressure, and then to be able to, you know, get a win is, is huge. And, um, you know, it's all, like for all of, coaches their families and the players families i mean i had a lot of people fly in from a lot of different parts of the, of the country um tonight you know and and um you know it meant something you know nationally as well coach all that pressure and the guys still i mean in the second half there i think kb and mckay are dancing after some made buckets they played with a swagger tonight could you feel that type of performance maybe coming or did you need to really like see it and the players needed to feel it to maybe build some confidence moving forward? I think everybody wants to see it, feel it, but I, um, no, I mean, I walked in the building thinking we were going to win the night. Um, you know, I, I, uh, you know, no one feels sorry for you. I mean, I started laughing. I go after the game, no one's even going to know that our leading score didn't play, you know, like, if you don't win the game, nobody's saying, well, T Mark didn't play because nobody cares. It was a great lesson. Chuck Daly, you know, I heard him say it a hundred times. Nobody gives whatever word you want to use when you got a guy out. They just say you won or lost. And so um I thought our guys resp they responded. I mean, you know, we 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 talked the last two days like we were gonna win the game. Like we weren't coming in here hopeful. Um we felt that that we were going to win if we did X, Y, and Z, and and we did that. We won the battle of the boards. We went to our depth a little bit earlier than normal. We we had a couple guys make threes that maybe hadn't. We told our four men they were going to be wide open based on the fact that if we put our five man in pick and rolls, their four man's going to help when our five rolls. And sure enough, you know some of those things started happening, and and um. And our guys, you know, had great belief and knocked down some shots that maybe we hadn't in, in Nassau. Up when you're starting to create some separation, Caleb hits a three, puts you up eight. He hits another one later, puts you up 14. How much do you think he loves those momentum-type shots? I mean, he, you know, I think one of them he missed, too. Like, I mean, I think he, you know, he and J.D. might be related. Um, no, Tay. Cause they both, you know, they both just kind of out there balling, you know what I mean? Like some of his shots are like, Oh no. And then they go in and you're like, Oh, great shot. Defense. This team was an elite offensive team, top 10 in the country. According to Ken Palm, you took everything away. They did well. Their assisted turnover was two to one as a team, 10 to eight. They barely did it. Barely broke even there. And then 35% from the field, 27% from three. You took it all the way. Did it start on that end, really? Because the ball movement was better on offense, but was the defense really the catalyst? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, offensively it was um, – well, I mean, we added two pick-and-roll plays. Um, one of them we just 
I mean, we called it Duke fist. Um, and that we got a lot of sh open shots with our foreman and going from the right wing and looping underneath to the left corner. Um, uh, TB got, you know, two wide open looks. And I know Davenport got one when, when he played that same spot. Um, but yeah, defensively, I think the one area, Kevin, that we, you know, that we were really disappointed in was, was a defense, um, in Nassau, you know, cause shots come and go. And, um, I thought defensively we have enough quickness and enough, uh, enough length, uh, to, to play better on that side of the ball. 